We are officially recording. Okay, welcome to the Tuesday 11 o'clock class, everybody. It's wonderful to see all your bright, shining, smiley faces, but you know what? It's not the same as being in the store. I know. I miss you guys. Okay, what do we know about September song? Dawn? 200. Okay. I have it in this book. That works. Yes, that's a great one. Okay. Songs of the last century? Absolutely. It's a popular enough song that you should be able to find it in, in just about yes. any other book. Is that in setup? Okay, now remember, you guys are able to mute and unmute your microphones by yourself. And I'm okay with that, as long as you're not making a lot of noise on the other end. Um, when I play, I am going to encourage all of you to mute your microphone. Just you know, click on your little microphone down at the bottom of your screen, and it will mute yourself. Okay? Um, this was introduced by Walter Houston in the 1938 Broadway musical Knickerbocker Holiday. Did, you, did anybody ever see that? No, me either. <laughs> it was also used in the 1950 film called September Affair. Houston requested that he have one solo to sing in Knickerbocker Holiday. He was an older gentleman and he wanted to have a, uh, he wanted to sing, darn it. So, <laughs> so they wrote him uh, one song. He, it took like two hours to write the song. And they had to remember that he had a very gruff voice and a very limited vocal range. So this was the culmination of that. Um, it was only a six-month run. That's why nobody's ever heard of this Knickerbocker holiday. It was only on Broadway for six months, so obviously not that popular. But this became a very popular song. Okay. Uh, Knickerbocker Holiday was a political allegory portraying a semi-fascist government criticizing the New Deal. Oh my goodness, does his history repeat itself or what? Yeah, then in 1943, Bing Crosby did it. And in 1946, Frank Sinatra. In 49, Mr. Burl Ives. In 54, Sarah Vaughn, fabulous singer. In 78... Mr. Willie Nelson did it. Mm -hmm. So if you ever wanted, uh, and we're going to do one of Willie's, we're going to kind of recreate Willie's background on this because he did an awesome job. Very, very sweet song. Um, in 85, Lou Reed. Are you serious? Are you kidding me? This does not seem like his style at all. You remember who Lou Reed was? Take a walk on the wild side. Mm -hmm. That was, he was rock and roll kind of a offbeat singer, songwriter, goofy guy, but he, he did some incredible stuff. But I would not have picked him as doing a song like September Song. Um, and then in 1990, Jeff Lynne recorded this. Now, Jeff Lynne was with the Electric Light Orchestra, so if that tells you a little bit about him. And he did this with George Harrison, and we heard a little bit about George Harrison yesterday and his uh, My Sweet Lord slide guitar. And so they did a version of September Song doing the same thing. So all kinds of different versions of this song. So the, the point of it is don't be afraid to get creative with your rhythms. Song setup, which is what we're going to start with, I'm just going to up it a little bit in tempo, but is Song setup is a great suggestion always, but that's all it is, is a suggestion. It's a way to get you started. And then you guys have all these other fabulous rhythms to choose. Try them all. Try them and see what happens. Because that's what makes the creative part of this fun. Am I going to add new chords to this? Yes, I am because I can. <laughs> so we're going to have some new chords today. Um, we'll have some fun with the arrangement, but I'm going to start with song setup. It comes up to autumn keys, and it comes up at 64. I upped the tempo to 72. 64 was a little bit slow. And it has strings on the top and guitars on the lower keyboard. 
There is no roadmap. Woohoo! So if you please mute, mute yourselves, we will start with September song. Okay, pretty song. There were probably other, other pretty songs in Knickerbocker Holiday. Too bad that the, the, the play didn't, the musical didn't work, didn't last six months and it was gone. It was probably too political. Eh, it happens all the time. Yep. Okay, let's talk about some chords. So get your pencils out. Now remember, Anything that I am putting in for you today is 100% optional. That means you don't have to play them. It will give yourself a little bit of a challenge if you do. And if you like the sound of one chord, just learn one new chord. If you learn one new chord every time you sit down, you're going to have a, an entire library of chords after a while. Okay. The F minor at the beginning of the song, if you're playing it with two fingers, it is F and A flat. For those of you who would like to make it more advanced, make it an F minor 6. That's a four-fingered chord, and you have to play F, A flat, C, D, in that order. Six chords you have to play with the root note on the bottom or it won't work. The D flat, you can just play D flat or you may play D flat seven. Remember the rule of sevens is the letter minus two. So you can play D flat and B. D flat and B or yeah, if you feel like it, play B and D flat. I don't care. I don't care. I, I see nothing. Okay. Second line, make that first F an F major seven, F capital M-A-J seven. Your notes are E and F. The rule for major sevens is the letter minus one, the very next note to the left. Second measure <clears throat> over the blacked in quarter note. Go back to a plain old F or you may play F Six. Now that's a chord that does get you out of position again because you must play it in this order. F, A, C, D. F, A, C, D. Must be played in that order. 
the G is good, or the G7. The B-flat minor, if you wish to play it, you may. It's D-flat and B-flat. For those of you who are a little more adventuresome, put in a G minor 7 flat the fifth. Told you I'm going to give you some toughies today because I can. <laughs> the evil teacher in me comes out. Okay, a G minor 7 flat the fifth is F, G, B flat, D flat, in any order. This does not matter, any order you want, but you must play those four notes. F, G, B flat, D flat. If you want to put the D flat on the bottom, go for it. The C or C7 is good, C and B flat. Let's go to line three. Make that first F an F major seven. F major seven is E and F. It's a jazz chord. The next measure over the blacked in quarter note, put a no chord, N dot C dot. Do you remember how to make that? It's any three notes in consecutive notes on the bottom keyboard. I like F, F sharp, and G, but you can use any three, and it, what it does is it stops the chord, it keeps your drums going so that you do not lose your count. The F minor is F and A flat, if you wish, you may make it an F minor 6. F, A flat, C, D, in that order. The fourth line, you may play just a D flat or make it a D flat 7. Regular 7s are the letter minus 2, 2 to the left. So it's D flat and B or B and D flat. Make the F over the word flame an F major seven. E and F. The next measure over the blacked in quarter note, go back to a plain old F, or do an F six. F, A, C, D, in that order only. The G7 is good, and then we go to page two. Top of the page, you may play B flat minor, or, which is D flat and B flat, by the way, or you may put in a G minor seven flat the fifth. Your notes are F, G, B flat, D flat, in any order, doesn't matter. The C is good, or the C7, either one, C and B flat. Make that next F over the word game, an F major 7, E and F. If that's the only new chord you learn, is that F major 7, that's a pretty one to put in. Okay, the next one is a B flat minor, which is D flat and B flat. If you wish, you may make it a B flat minor Six. Now this one you have to take your hand out of the box and put the B flat on the bottom. And your notes are B flat, D flat, F, G. And you can play the F and G with your thumb at the same time. As opposed to just a plain old B flat minor, there's very little difference. It's very subtle. The sixes, they're very subtle, but they're very nice. Okay, the second line, you have a G or a G7. You may play a B diminished seven or a D diminished. If you play the D diminished, it is D and A flat. The B diminished seven is going to have four notes in it. B, D, F. A flat, and again, that can really be in any order. But diminished chords can always just be with two fingers. The rule is the letter plus six. The letter of the chord plus six. D and A flat. 
third line, B flat minor, D flat and B flat, or you may make it A B flat minor six. B flat, D flat, F, G. We're just repeating what we did already. The G7, yeah, I would cross it out, same as in the upper line. Try the D diminished. If you can't get it, go back to G7. D diminished is D and A flat, or B diminished seven. B, D, F, A flat. And you're going to find that if you go back and forth between those two chords, there really is no difference. The only thing that changes on your Lowry Easy Play is the bass note. If I play, if I play a B diminished seven, it's down here, with a B in the bass. If I play a D diminished, it's the same chord. It's the same chord with a D in the bass, so it really doesn't matter. Diminished chords are pretty cool, actually. Use your ear and let your ear be the best judge. The F chord is fine. Let's go now to line four. The F minor is F and A flat. You may make it an F minor six. F minor six is F, A flat, C, D. In that order, sixes must have the root of the chord in the bottom. The D flat is a D flat seven, if you wish, which would be D flat and B. Make that next F an F major seven, E and F. Over the quarter rest in the next measure, go back to plain old F or F6. Remember, six chords must have the root in the bottom. It's a four-fingered chord, F, A, C, D. And if you're unsure, check in your window. It'll tell you what chords you're playing. G7, F and G. The G minor can just be G and B flat, or you can make it a G minor seven flat the fifth, which would be G, I'm sorry, F, G, B flat, D flat, or put the D flat on the bottom, doesn't matter. Over the next F, the word is with, put in an F sharp, Major seven, F sharp major seven. The two notes are F and F sharp. And if you're playing full fingered chords, you're only gonna change one note. So if you're already on a G minor seven flat the fifth, F, G, B flat and D, all you have to do is change the G to an F sharp, just move that one finger and end on an F6. Or if you don't like the F6, end on a plain old F. Questions about the chords? Nope. Yes, I, I have a question. Yes. Uh, okay. On, on our first page, uh, the mm -hmm. last line. Yep. Uh, where you said uh, on the third measure, blacked in quarter note, do something. Yes. Uh, wh wh which quarter note are you talking about? The, 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 one that's, the one that's totally blacked in. It's the held C in measure three. There's no letter written in it. It's black. The first beat of the measure. Over the word flame or what? Yeah, you're still holding on to the word flame. Okay. It's that next measure. Oh, that I see. And, and where it's, where, okay, where it's, where it's held. Okay, mm -hmm. and what did you want over that? Either a plain old F, as in fish, or an F6. <coughs> Could Either you give a plain me... old F or an F6. An F6 is what were that? F, an, an... Yeah. A, C, D. D, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. But those jazz chords just give it a nice, nice flavor. Dawn, I have a question. Yes. Um, page two, uh -huh. lines, line two and three. 
Okay. You have the d diminished chords in there. Yes. On mine, I have um, F minor on both of them. Oh, okay. Um, so where, where do you want those eh. diminished chords? F minor over Precious Few. Oh, yes, okay. Instead of, okay, this book has a G7. F minor actually works, but, because F minor is this. Right. But the D diminished is D and A flat, and that, that works a little better. And then okay. the B diminished seven is this. They just become more sinister chords. So just replace the uh, F minor. Correct, yes. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Don't Oh, sorry. Go Go one more. In, in in line three, we mm -hmm. had a tide there where it says September, mm -hmm. and then A is tied. Um, and it, did you have another change on that tide? No, note? Okay. no. The B flat minor or the B flat minor six goes for two measures. Good question. Oh, no, well, wait a minute. Uh, you have. And uh, you had first an F major seventh, and then over the next A, did you have a... a, a, a what? A, Wait a minute. Oh, you're on, on line, you're on page one. Yeah. Okay, and, page on one, the, line, the, line the third two line. three. Okay, third. line three. It's an F major seven for yeah. one measure. Right. The next measure, first beat. Again, it's that blacked in quarter note where you're still right. holding burr. Put right. an N, C, a no chord. A oh. no chord. And you want to oh, do that so that okay. your when the autumn, that comes in, it, it, it just gives it drama. That's what it does. Oh. Drama. <laughs> I, put, oh. I put the NC over the last, uh, over tome. Uh, that oh, no, no, no. Other it, end of the measure. It, did, it didn't make any sense. Okay. No, I, it, no, before you do when the autumn. Right. I get it. Okay. Get it. Thank you. Very cool. There. Don, what's the difference between uh, on all those uh, B flat minors if you put a seven in versus the sixes or I think what the other I forgot what. The oh other no, was. you can't put a seven in a seven. A seven is a lead-in chord or a moving chord. So if I'm doing a B flat minor seven it sounds like this. And you're waiting to get to that chord. It's a lead-in chord. If you're playing a six chord, you're just adding a little spice. Okay. It's not a lead-in chord. You can, end on, you can end a song. A lot of songs are ended on six. It's a very stable chord. It's a jazz chord. Okay. But always use your ears as the final judge. Okay, any other questions? Ready for some When, when we did this, I'm sorry. When we did this before, am I mm -hmm. on? Yeah. Uh, you had Bert's Bounce on there. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't know what Bert's Bounce is under, but did, 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 did you like that also? Um, I didn't use it this time, but you know, there are so many things you can use on this. Bert's okay. Bounce is fine. That's what, absolutely what is, fine. What is Bert's Bounce under? It's under a... Um, is that Big Band or Foxtrot? Hold on. It's under Big Band. It's under your very first blue I button. See yeah, I see it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Dawn? Yes? Um... When we went through this, we did it on Hawaiian Paradise, and it really does sound good. It gives you that same background, kind of like autumn leaves. Like the leaves, yeah. Like yeah. You got those, yeah. the, your fill-in gives you those waves, and it's like right. the autumn leaves falling. Yes, yeah. And it has some good instruments in there. Mm -hmm. That would be an awesome one, Hawaiian Paradise. Yep. I have a tendency to overuse that background because I love it. I use it a lot. That one and Strings 101. So I tried to pick out some new things this time. Um, I haven't even told you some of my other backgrounds yet, but those two are fabulous suggestions. And like I said, get creative. You know, go through and find some neat things because this song will lend itself to so many different rhythms. John, what would I use on the fanfare? On the fanfare. Um, there's so many on there too. I think you have autumn keys on the fanfare. 
Okay, I haven't checked that one. Check, yeah, check for autumn keys. Um, it should be in your song setup. Also, your smooth guitarist is going to be nice. And I am also going to suggest Latin. No. Mm. Oh. Yeah. I played it on a Roomba with flutes and brass, and it sounds absolutely gorgeous. As a matter of fact, let's do that one right now. I'm not going to play the whole thing. I just want you to get a taste of what the Latin, which is something completely different, what it can sound like. Nice, huh? Mm -hmm. it just gives it a little bit of extra. That's that's the note. Good. That's the rumba. Uh, which, which Latin did you use? That's the rumba begin. That's your okay. first variation. Okay. Go a trumpet in there, you'd be excellent. Do what? <laughs> Throw a trumpet in there in the Latin, and you'd be excellent. Yeah, it's on the bottom. <laughs> it's on the bottom. That's good. There. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> That's Rumba Begin Rhythm Preset 2. And it brings up the flutes on the top and the brass on the bottom. So it's already done for you. Yeah. Yeah, don't be afraid to try other things. That's really pretty cool. Are you ready for fingering? Yep. Okay. Pencils out. F1, A2. Don't forget to mute yourselves. So everybody can hear F1, A2, E5, D4, D4, D4. F1, watch out for that quarter note triplet here. F1, A flat 2, D flat 4. Remember that is not a fast triplet, it's three notes in the space of two beats. Just feel it, just feel it. Don't try to count it. Second line, C3, C3. At the end of the held C, check mark. That's just, that just means lift your hand and take a breath with your hand and lift it and reposition it. A1, A1, C2, F4, G5. G1, G1, F2, put a circle around it. That's just our way of saying cross that pointer over. Just gives you a little visual cue. The last G in the line is a three, so you're gonna do a little pivot there. Third line, A4, A4. At the end of that held A, check mark. Take another little breath with your hand. F1, F1. A2, E5, D4, D4. Fourth line, F1, F1, A flat 2, D flat 4, C3, A1, C2, C2, F4, G5. Top of the second page, G1, A2, B flat 3, B flat 3, A2. At the end of that held A, check mark. F3, that's the high F. F3, G4, F3, E2, F3. Second line, F3, F3, A flat 5, F3, F3. The end of that line, F3. Hmm, imagine that. G4, F3, F3, A flat 5, F3. Now remember, these are suggestions. If your pinky doesn't like going on that A flat, 
change your, your fingers to two and four. It doesn't matter. Whichever is comfortable for you. All right. And these few, the end of line three is F1, A2, E5, line four, D4, 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 F1, A flat, two, D flat, four, C3, A1, C2, F4, the last line is G5, D2, F4, F4, F4. Questions? Nope. Good. You guys can listen good on that. Excellent. All right. Now, I said we were going to do something a little different. Willie Nelson did a really nice job on this. And it's, it's just a sweet little, he's just strumming the guitar and singing. And his pure vocals are coming out. And I know some of you don't think Willie Nelson is a really good singer. But if you listen to this song that he does, he really does use a very sweet voice with this song. Very nice. So if I'm trying to recreate what Willie did, I want a strumming guitar. Hmm. Any clues on how we're going to make a strumming guitar? How about no rhythm and just use your golden harp? Now, some of you don't have the golden harp more button. Those of you who do, you're going to go to the more and you're going to see all these different patterns. I'm sure you can try up and down and see if you like it um, or try a skip pattern and see if you like it. But I chose number seven, which is a guitar pattern. And then I went to my genius voice and changed it from a harp sound. And by the way, I am at 68 beats a minute, but you can regulate it to whatever you need. So a har just a regular harp sounds like this. But that's a guitar pattern because it's like strumming, picking the guitar in place. If I change the genius voice, to an acoustic guitar, it sounds like somebody is just strumming the guitar and picking the guitar. Now I do have the easy button on, and I have some stuff in the bass. I have some strings. Remember, your lower tabs are your lower sound. I have your strings, and what's my lower genius? Oh, it's a steel guitar but I also lowered that volume so you're not hearing a loud hum. And I lowered the bass a little bit so that you, that would not overpower because what I really wanted to come through is just that golden harp strumming. Now, yeah. golden harp works off of chords, so you must use the easy button unless you're playing full-fingered chords. But it is kind of nice to have that bottom end, that bass just there. Just turn it down a little bit. Now, what am I using on top? I believe I went to Chet's guitar, which is, um, yeah, I think I went to Chet's guitar, which is Country 3. It's a jazz guitar. And I'm going to play it now, in a, and it's going to sound completely different. And if you're intrigued, go to YouTube and listen to Willie Nelson doing September song, and you'll be, you'll be wowed. And even if you're not a, a Willie Nelson fan, I think you will really be wowed. OK, now here's a question for you to start out, too. We have an F chord at the end and an F minor chord at the beginning. Which one do you start with? F. F, correct. This is one of those times when that's the 99% rule. 99% of the time, it is the last chord. When you have a minor of the same letter, those are called parallel majors and minors. Now, the only reason you need to know that is if you go on Jeopardy. But it's important for your intro. Your first three notes are F, A, and E, which are found in the F major scale. 
And you don't want to play an F minor chord, and then F minor being F and A flat, and then those first three notes are F and A. And again, use your own judgment. Try them both and see which works for you, but I guarantee you the F chord is the one you need to start this on. And there is no introduction when you do not have a rhythm. So you just have to start with the chord. And there's no drummer either. So you've got to just kind of feel. about keeping perfect time. There's no drummer to tell you that you're making a mistake. So you play it the way you would sing it. Now I'm gonna add a 16 foot string on your string tabs. And to stop it, you just do your little no chord, and that cuts off everything. Interesting version, huh? Now, for those of you that like a little more rhythm to help keep you on the beat, okay, try to experiment with that. See what you think, because that works for a lot of other th songs, too. Go but on. If, yes. Ken. I Go just ahead. Sang, I just sang that Willie Nelson version with you. And it's really good. It's pretty, isn't it? Yeah, I'm going to record yeah. that. It's really pretty. Um, yeah. So for those people that want something close to that, you can go to your soft and easy guitars. Where did I put that? OK, soft and easy guitars. Take off the Orchestra Plus. Actually, if you go to Rhythm Preset 1, it takes off the Orchestra Plus for you. And that also. Mm -hmm gives me a jazz guitar with 16 foot strings. And on the bottom, there's a flute on the bottom. And if you put it at 72, well, between 68 and 72 is good, it's going to keep your beat for you. So for those of you that like to have that beat behind you so that you really feel like you're singing along with the radio, this is kind of the same thing that we just did, but it's going to give you those guitar arpeggios in the rhythm. The soft and easy guitars does that for us. But it also gives us a drum beat, so it really seriously helps us to keep the beat on this.
Those of you with fanfares, try your smooth guitarist. I think that one's going to give you something very, very close. Oh, thank you, Barbie. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, this, this just is, has so many possibilities. It really does. So when, uh, when you did it uh, with the Willie Nelson information, mm -hmm. I went over to, um, um, uh, let's see, the uh, more on, under, on the Golden Harp and Correct. Genius, and, it came, and I went to se number seven is Guitar Pattern. But Correct. over on the left there under Golden Harp, it says Bells. How do I get rid of the bells? Well, because your genius, now you remember, your genius is the blank tile in your Scrabble box. You can make that any sound you want. And so it, yeah, 99 times out of 100, I found that the genius button in, it comes up bells. It defaults to bells. So when it goes to bells, all you have to do is go to your scroll, okay. and scroll, 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 alphabetical order, until you find the sound you like. Oh, so, but all it, the bells doesn't change. It just, the, the scroll. The scrolling. Changed changes your bells. The push your genius. Hip pattern. Yeah. Push your genius so that bells come up in the window because that's usually what comes up anyway. Right. Yeah. And so then you play you play your chord. That's a flugelhorn. That sounds terrible, doesn't it? And you just keep scrolling. There's a flute. Uh, whenever I do the um, the scrolling, it just scrolls the uh, the patterns. It's it going to change. It's going to change the sound. And you keep yeah. scrolling. You keep scrolling until you find acoustic guitar or one of your other jazz guitars or a nylon guitar. I just like the acoustic guitar because it sounds nice. The the bells won't go away. I don't know. They should. No, oh, just it's just going up and down the harp pattern. Okay, what you do is now let's do this again. Golden harp. Yeah. Touch the more button. Yeah. Touch number seven guitar pattern. Right. Okay. Then touch your genius. And then genius. What comes up in the window? Bells. Now scroll. The scroll button is right next to the window. Yeah. And what's oh, it doing? Oh, after I hit the genius button, then it yes. goes Caroline, but it still says bells. So well, keep going. Time. Keep going. You've got a long way to go to get to the G's. There are so many sounds in there. It's alphabetical oh. order. Oh, there and then said cello. Okay, I yeah, see. Yeah, just it. keep going. Just keep going. If you if you hold it down, it's going to go real fast, and it'll get to the G's, and then you can try the different guitars. You try them. Now remember, okay. Golden Harp works okay. with the yeah. chord. Okay. What what guitar did you use? Just the acoustic guitar. Okay. That's what's up there now. Okay. okay, thank you, thank you. You're very welcome. Now remember, if you have problems with that or you want to try it and you're not sure how to get that on your organ, you know, call me, drop in on me. I'm here nine to five every day and just uh, let me know oh, yeah. what you're struggling with. As long as we don't have more than five people in the store at the same time, we're good. Good, yep. Ye yesterday, Don, when we were doing, I don't mean to go back, but just for a point of, uh, reference here. Mm -hmm. I did um, uh, True Love on Obla D. Okay. It was hysterical. Yep. Did you listen yeah. to it on YouTube too? I, I uh, yeah, and, and yes. And then I listened <laughs> to George Harrison when you mm -hmm. were talking about yes, right. Uh -huh. But I mean, if you go and do it on Obla D, mm -hmm. um, it, it is just. If, then you go back the old way to do True Love the way. A smooth way. Uh -huh. It sounds boring next to the <laughs> D. It's really cool. Yeah, it's really I agree cool. With you. But that's really? that's what I love about music is it just it it opens us up to new possibilities and getting creative and trying new things. And sometimes it just takes listening to somebody go off the rails like George Harrison did on, on True. Oh, it was. I, I just kept to stop sitting here for three hours. Yeah. <laughs> and, what a wonderful uh, thing. A wonderful thing. Yep. Thing. Okay, now we have a little bit of time left. So those of you who are close to your instrument, if you're close to your instrument, I'm going back to song setup. I will slow it down. I will okay. slow it down. Okay. And I go ahead and play September song along with me. 
If you're struggling with chords, just play one hand. And we'll just, we'll do like we did in the story. Everybody play together. Just put on your easy. Do not put on anything else, just your easy. And this is the rhythm. Here's the introduction and then I'll count. I'm gonna count one, two, three, four, one. One, two, three, four, one. Good. Very nice. Now remember, use your fill-in, especially when you get to that bridge part, okay? All the days dwindle down to a precious few, and you're playing those minor six chords and diminished chords. Use your fill-ins to work with you, and that's where, like, the Hawaiian Paradise is going to give you a fabulous fill-in. This autumn leaves gives you all those leaves swirling around. So, yes, use your fill-ins to work with you on a song. Where's your bridge, Don? The bridge is, oh, the days dwindle down to a precious few, September, November, and then it starts back to the beginning of the song and these few precious days. It's, it's the same pattern of song. The bridge is always the middle part that doesn't match any other part of the song. And that's usually a good place to change sounds or change keyboard top to bottom or add, um, add your harmony. Just good tools to use. Okay, next week, the next song in my book, come on, is Skylark. That's a very pretty jazz song. It's a three-pager. Be prepared to learn some chords. <laughs> what song was that? Skylark. I Skylark. You not have it? Um, I is don't it not, think so. Is it, it not in your? Is it not in in your eighth edition or your sixth edition? I got the fifth edition, and no, I don't oh, have it. Oh, okay. The eighth edition has it. The eighth edition has it? Okay, we'll do it then, and, and Ramon, just shoot me an email to remind me to uh, send a copy of the song your way. Okay, thank okay. you. Sixth edition doesn't have it either. Which one? Sixth edition. Sixth doesn't, it okay, it's time to write a letter to Hal Leonard. <laughs> Seventh edition has it. 
Okay, e shoot me an email, you guys, if you don't have it and you need it, because it is a really cool jazz song. Um, I was a little bit unfamiliar with it, but look who wrote it. Hoagie Carmichael. Oh. So if it's Hoagie Carmichael, it's got to be something good. All right. What you guys book are the number? It's, it's in 274. Okay, it's in that one too? Okay. Yeah. And the white pages. Nice. Three six, 316. <laughs> Nice. Yeah, a lot of these songs that are repeats in other books. And again, thank you to everybody who's joining me. As even, even for people who are repeating the song, because I know a lot of these songs we've done before, thank you for your patience. Oh, okay. I think we learn every time we sit down to a song. I always find new things. Absolutely. Yep. This okay, I I'm going to be gone for a week. I'll miss you. Oh, well, it sh it'll all be recorded. Okay. Okay. I have a Skylark on um, 274. Okay. Good. There's a Skylark in 8th edition. Uh, in Harvard, not all. It's the 8th edition of 200, page 139. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's going to be different pages, too, so I'm not even going to give you page numbers. All right. Perfect. Now, don't forget, you do have some product workshops. Everybody gets all the emails. Check out the product workshops um, whenever you want. And again, those all get recorded too. But it is kind of nice to check those out live. So if you have any questions, you can raise your hand and stop and get your question answered in the middle of the workshops. Um, the concert this Friday at 2, the big uh, Fletcher musical concert is Joni Monero at it's 2 o'clock. And then on the 31st, which is the following Friday, it's going to be Dawn and Randy, and we're going to try with Randy again. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. You guys are the awesomest. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Love you guys. Bye. 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 Good job, Dawn. Well, thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.